Welcome back to this video series on the provider package. In the last video we took a first glance at the provider package and we have seen how to use it to add flavors to a sample Flutter application. And in this video we will take a step forward and refactor the counter example app to use provider. And while doing this we will capture the essence of what provider is all about because we will learn how to use it as a state management technique, we will understand how to use provider and the consumer widget and we will also cover change notifier and value notifier as an effective technique for state management that scales across multiple widgets. So this video really is an essential guide to provider. And if this is useful, please like and subscribe so that you can improve your Flutter skills. Okay, so let's get started with a recap of how Flutter applications are built. And what I have here is a widget tree for the example counter app. And normally we have a widget at the top which represents the entire application and then we have a material app which is a convenience widget that we always need if our application uses material design. And then we have some arrangement of widgets which depends on how our app is structured and this diagram shows the widget tree for the Flutter counter example which is running over here. And the way this counter app works is that when we press the floating action button then we update a counter variable inside a call to set state and this entire widget rebuilds as a result along with all these descendants causing the text inside this widget to show the updated counter value. And this approach works well here because this is a simple use case where all the state management logic can live inside a single widget class which is a stateful widget. But there are times where we deal with much more complex widget hierarchies and we need to propagate state across different widget classes. For example, here we have a producer widget which can emit some events and change some internal application state. And there are one or more listener widgets that need to rebuild themselves when the state changes. And to accomplish this we could use a technique called lifting state up. And the idea here is to use a stateful widget as the first common ancestor of all these widgets and then we can propagate the state changes from this widget all the way up to the common ancestor and call set state at this level and this will cause a rebuild of the listeners as well as all these other widgets. However, this approach doesn't scale well and requires a lot of boilerplate code and it is also inefficient because when this widget rebuilds then all these descendants rebuild as well. And this is one example where provider comes to the rescue. So what we can do here is to add a provider as a common ancestor to all these widgets and with this setup the producer widget can find the provider that it needs and update the state and the listener widgets can register themselves for updates so that they can rebuild when the state changes. Now, one thing that I want to make clear is that this provider is a common ancestor to all the widgets inside this subtree, so any of these widgets can get access to the provider, but only the widgets that have registered themselves as listeners will rebuild when the state changes. On the other hand, this widget over here on the left does not have access to the provider because it doesn't have it as an ancestor. So the bottom line is that every time we create a new provider, we need to decide where it should go on the widget tree, depending on who needs access to it. And we will talk more in detail about this in a future video. Okay, so let's see how to apply all of this theory to our example. So our next goal is to refactor the counter example app to use provider. And by the way, we must not forget to install provider as a dependency in our pubspec.yaml file. And here I'm doing this with the pubspec assist extension of Visual Studio Code. Okay, so now that provider has been installed, I can save the file and get the latest packages. And then I can get back to the main file. And as you can see, in the current implementation, we have a counter that holds the value that we want to show. And because this value can change, then we need to use a stateful widget so that we can call set state when we want to rebuild our widget. And what we want to do instead is to define a provider with a new counter class which holds the counter value and can be updated when the floating action button is pressed. And then we want to register this text widget as a listener so that it can rebuild itself when the counter changes. And as we will see, once we are done with our refactor, then this widget will become stateless. Okay, so let's start by creating a new counter class. So over here I'm going to create a new Dart file called counter.dart 
And here I can define a class counter and inside it I can create an int value with an initial value of zero. And then we can add a new void increment method that we can use to increment our value. So as it is, this class holds our counter value and we can increment it by calling this method. However, we also need a way for this class to notify its listeners when the counter is updated. And to do this, we can use a class called change notifier. And this can be either implemented or added as a mixing to existing classes. So in this case, we can type with change notifier to add this as a mixing to our counter class. And we need to import foundation.dart in order to use this. And with this change, we can call the methods of change notifier from inside our counter class. And this means that we can call a method called notify listeners when the counter is updated. And with this change, our counter class is complete. Next, we can head back to our main file. And what we want to do is to add a parent provider to this widget. So in this case, we can wrap a new widget and here we are going to use a change notifier provider of type counter. And to use this, we need to import provider and also counter.dart. And this is a special kind of provider that is designed to work with change notifier. And this provider takes my home page as a child widget, but it also needs to specify a builder argument. And this is a closure that takes a context and we can use this to return a counter like this. And I can quickly format my code as well. Okay, so by writing this code, we have inserted a provider as the parent of the my home page widget. Okay, so now that we have a parent provider, how can we use it? Well, if we go down to the build method, here I can delete these lines and instead I can get my counter by typing final counter equals provider dot of with type counter of context like this. And then we can locate the text widget that shows the counter value and we can replace this with counter dot value inside curly braces. And also we can update the unpressed callback of the floating action button by calling counter dot increment like this. And now that we have made these changes, we can see that the old counter variable and this method are no longer needed. So we can delete all this code. And since we no longer have any mutable state in this widget class, we can convert it to a stateless widget instead. So here I can just change this to stateless widget. And also I can remove all these lines from here. And after making this change, I can replace widget.title with just title because I can access this instance variable directly. And this is all we needed to do to refactor our counter example. So at this stage, we can hot restart our application and the counter has been reset to zero. And we can see that when we press this button, then the counter text is updated. And while this works, maybe it's not entirely clear why the text updates. After all, we have just removed all calls to set state. So how does this widget know that it needs to rebuild itself? And the answer is that when we call provider of counter with context, not only we get the counter object, but we are also registering the current widget as a listener to this provider. So let me say this once again. When we call provider.of inside a widget, not only we get access to the value that we want, but we also register that widget as a listener. And what this means is that my homepage completely rebuilds itself every time the counter changes, because my homepage is now a listener for this counter class. And this works, but it's inefficient because it means that all the descendant widgets of my homepage also rebuild themselves even though they are not affected by the counter change. And if we want to avoid this, we can get back to our provider.of call. And here we can add a new argument called listen, and we can give it a value of false like this. And when we do this, we still get the counter value, but we no longer register the current widget as a listener for the counter. And if we hot restart, the counter is reset 
And we can see that if we press on this button, then the text value no longer changes because our widget is no longer a listener and the build method is no longer called when the state changes. Okay, so what we really want to do here is to only rebuild this text widget when the counter changes. And to do that, we need to introduce a new widget called consumer. And a consumer is a widget inside the provider package that is used to register itself as a listener. So let's see how to use consumer in practice. And over here, we can locate our text widget and then we can wrap this with a new widget. And this is going to be a consumer of type counter like this. And here we don't want to use the child argument, but instead we will give it a builder, which is a closure that takes a context and a counter and a child and we want to use this to return our text widget. And just to be clear, the counter variable that we are using here now comes from the argument of our builder. And with this change, we can save and hot reload. And we can see that when we press on this button, then the text value updates again. So we have just accomplished our goal, which was to update only this text widget when the counter changes. And we have done this by using a consumer widget. And once again, this works by calling a builder every time the counter changes. By the way, here we are only using the counter value from the builder argument. So if we want, we can use an underscore as a placeholder for the context argument that we are not using. And we are also not using the child argument. So we can use a double underscore as a placeholder. Okay, so it's now time to do a quick recap of everything that we have learned. And I encourage you to follow this summary carefully because this really captures the essence of provider. So we started off by reviewing the widget tree for the example counter application. And we said that sometimes propagating state from one producer to one or more listeners is inefficient and requires a lot of boilerplate code. And we have proposed provider as a possible solution to this problem. And we have seen how to apply this to our counter example by defining a counter class that uses change notifier to notify its listeners when the counter value changes. And then we have added change notifier provider as a parent to the my home page widget. And we have seen how to get the counter value by calling provider.of with type counter with context. And we have learned that by default, calling provider.of registers the current widget as a listener, causing all its descendants to rebuild when the counter changes. And as an improvement, we have passed a listen of false argument to our call in order to avoid unnecessary rebuilds. And instead, we have added a consumer of type counter as the parent of our text widget. And with this setup, this builder is called every time the counter changes and we can use this to rebuild our text widget with the updated value. Okay, so I think we've come a long way and I could wrap up this video over here because our implementation works and is quite efficient as well. However, there is one more thing that I want to talk about. You see, in this tutorial, we have chosen to implement a simple counter class which implements change notifier. However, if all we need to do is to hold a simple integer value and update listeners when this changes, then we don't even need a custom class. And instead, we can use a value notifier. And as we will see, value notifier and change notifier are very closely related. So what I'm going to do is to quickly update our implementation to use value notifier. And then we will take a quick look at how value notifier works under the hood. Okay, so let's get back to our main file. And first of all, I can scroll up to the declaration of the change notifier provider. And here I can replace the counter type with value notifier of type int like this. And I can also update the builder argument to return a value notifier of type int. And I can pass zero as the initial value to the constructor. And then I can scroll down to the line where I get my counter. And here I also want to update this to provider of value notifier of type int like this. And I want to use this type in the consumer as well. So over here I can replace counter with value notifier of int. And finally I need to update the unpressed callback of the floating action button 
because this counter is now a value notifier and it doesn't have an increment method. So what I can do is to delete this and replace it with a closure that calls counter dot value plus plus so that we can increment the value like this. And this is all I need to do to make our counter example work with value notifier. And just to prove that this all still works, I can hot restart. And when I press on the plus button, I can see that everything works correctly. And once again, all I have done here is to replace all instances of the counter class with value notifier of int. So this is a good time to look at how value notifier is implemented. And as we can see, value notifier is a class that is generic on type T and it extends change notifier. And the documentation says that value notifier is a change notifier that holds a single value. And if we look at the implementation, we can see that it declares a private value of type T and then it exposes that value with a getter. And it also has a setter which checks if the new value is equal to the previous value. And if they are different, then it updates the value and it calls notify listeners. So this is a perfectly good replacement for the counter class that we had implemented ourselves. And because value notifier is a subclass of change notifier, then we can use it together with change notifier provider like we have done over here. And the bottom line of all of this is that if you are considering to use change notifier just to store single values, then you can use value notifier directly instead. And this will save you some code. Okay, so we have now reached the end of this tutorial. And in this video, we have seen how to use provider as a state management solution alongside change notifier or value notifier. And all the concepts that we have covered are essential to understanding how provider works. And they are also the foundation for more advanced Flutter tutorials. If you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so that you can improve your Flutter skills. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video where we will continue our deep dive about Provider.